Hello everyone, Glenn for Switch Up here, back today with another review, this time of a game called Vaporum. Now this one was written by one of our collaborators, and that was Shannon Glover. Many thanks to Shannon, she's written some lovely reviews for us in the past, so without further ado, let's jump into this one, shall we? Vaporum is a grid-based dungeon crawler RPG with puzzles and live-action combat. I had to do a little research on this type of game, as I had never played it before. Reviewing games for Switch Up is allowing me to journey into uncharted waters when it comes to games, and I'm loving it. Now according to Damien at Nintendo Life, Vaporum, and I quote, takes inspiration from games like Dungeon Master, Eye of the Beholder, and Legend of Grimlock, end quote. But does this steampunk-styled dungeon crawler provide a thrilling escape, or does it leave you begging for mercy? Well, many thanks to the developers for this review copy, so now, Let's find out. We know very little about the story from the get-go. A man washes up on a rocky island with no memories of who he is or how he got there. He notices a large tower built into the rocks themselves and has no option but to enter it in order to find some answers. As he traverses the many levels of the tower, he starts to uncover what it is that has happened. Various written pages and voice recordings about individuals and their past experiences within the tower are pieced together to create a bigger picture. Almost immediately I was sucked into the story and wanted to know where everyone had disappeared to. On numerous occasions your character explains that elements of the tower have an air of familiarity which only served to further pique my interest. Early on you learn that the individuals in the tower lived there and worked with an energy source called Fumium. The fumium is harnessed and utilised for batteries and eventually it was tested on cockroaches to understand its effects on living organisms. This is where things went south and you start to uncover a lot of the mysteries of the tower and what powers the bugs and other creatures you come across inside may have. It takes a lot for a story to suck me in and I can lose interest fairly easily but I admit I was hooked from the very beginning in Vaporum and story receives 17 out of 20. Both navigating the tower and combat take some practice. The default setting for tooltips is on and I would suggest keeping them on as they may help you to learn many of the game's mechanics. When you first enter the tower, you don't have any weapons for protection, but it's not long before you come across a room where you are given a choice of four exoskeleton rigs. You get to pick which one of the rigs to equip and you cannot change again at any point in the game. Each rig has a unique build, but they all seem fairly balanced and your choice comes down to which area you may need help in or what style of gameplay you gravitate towards. For example, I chose the heavy rig as I felt it would be a bit tougher and therefore a bit more forgiving as I began to learn the battle mechanics. I was confident in my choice pretty quickly because I took many direct hits early in the game whilst still learning the grid system and how best I should avoid the attacks. You are allowed to equip two weapon sets that you can instantly switch between via the L and the R buttons. I found myself using a one-handed blunt weapon with a shield at the beginning and switch into my pistol for enemies that I couldn't afford to get too close to. You pick up many items throughout the game, including ammunition, consumables, gadgets and gear upgrades. Now gadgets can be equipped two at a time. You press ZL and A and ZL and B to activate these, but some are on a shared cooldown, so you will need to plan wisely. You also find yourself swapping these out depending on which type of enemy you are facing in a specific level. For instance, some enemies are immune to shock, so you may want to swap that one out and put a fire effect on instead. Gadgets can cause damage or they can grant you time limited passive buffs like damage resistance or precision with a ranged weapon. The gear you pick up can be equipped into your armour slots to give you boosts to your integrity. In addition to this, some of the armour you come across will have passive traits that synergise with specific weapons, allowing for unique builds. Finally, in regards to your exo rig, you will level up as you defeat enemies and solve puzzles. For each time you level up, your rig will return to full health and energy, and will also award you one point to put into a talent tree of sorts. You can put these circuit points, as they're called, into categories based on what type of weapons you are using or in areas you feel you may need a bit of a boost. Perks include increased damage or speeding up the recovery of health or energy, amongst others. 
With all of the mechanics out of the way, I want to get into the nitty gritty of the actual gameplay. Having never played a grid based dungeon crawler before, the grid style did take some getting used to, as I alluded to earlier. There are various puzzles to solve in order to progress, but I was constantly on high alert, my adrenaline pumping through my veins because I never knew when an enemy was waiting around a corner. At the start of the game, I would encounter one of the many creepy mechano villains and completely panic, often walking myself into a corner with no way out, and my only option was to fight for survival. I learnt from my mistakes quickly though and began to map out my path so that I could avoid being attacked. The game implements a stop time feature that lets you literally freeze time in order to plan out your attack and your path. In some ways it became a dance of sorts and you would find yourself falling into a rhythm of attack and then retreat. The puzzle mechanics are straightforward and they fit seamlessly into the game. Some of the types of puzzle that you will encounter are block puzzles, lock and key, timed switch, counterweight and order of operations. These puzzles serve to impede your progress and make you think, but never get so frustrating that you may want to rage quit. They also provide a bit of a reprieve from the battles. I could only take so many juggernauts jumping out at me when I opened the door before I needed a bit of a break. Perhaps the only criticism I have of the gameplay is that it can sometimes be frustrating when you encounter multiple enemies at once. Your dance around the immediate platform takes a lot more consideration and more often than not I found myself cornered out of sheer panic. This was mostly user error though to be fair. The rooms sometimes felt claustrophobic in situations like this because you can't quite see everywhere. However, if you find yourself overwhelmed, you can change the difficulty of the game in the options menu whenever you desire, and I really appreciated this feature. Gameplay and controls receive 17 out of 20. Vaporum looks fantastic and runs beautifully in both docked and handheld mode. The steampunk style is apparent but not overdone. The tower is dark, damp and all around unnerving. They've done an incredible job at creating atmosphere in the game with the muted colours and the purposeful use of light or sometimes lack thereof. Immediately you get the impression that you've been dropped into a horror movie where advanced robots lay in wait for you. I had scenes from the movie 13 Ghosts playing in my head throughout the game. Unfortunately, there were no special glasses acquired to see into the beyond here, but perhaps that's a good thing. One of my critiques of Vaporum is that the text in the game is tiny. Even with my glasses I had to walk up to the television or in handheld mode bring the switch right up to my face in order to be able to read it. An option to increase font size would have been much appreciated. Another criticism I have of the game is the lack of variety in the enemies and the environments. Playing the game in long chunks became repetitive and it would certainly be better served playing in small bursts. Visuals receive 15 out of 20. Now we all know how much scarier a horror movie is because of its soundtrack. The iconic music from movies like Jaws or The Shining evoke emotions of sheer terror and get that adrenaline pumping. So in such an unnerving game like Vaporum, one would assume that the music would contribute to these uneasy feelings. However, Vaporum is surprisingly lacking in that department. Now there is music, but it's few and far between and was reserved for the more intense boss fights. The lack of music doesn't necessarily detract from the experience though, and if anything, it made me feel even more on edge. The quietness seems intentional and made me feel like I was actually combing through endless levels of fright. There is a constant machine-like drone that accompanies you on your expedition, and after many hours, it became almost a familiar friend. Water dripping off pipes served to reinforce that feeling that I was very much alone in a never-ending maze of caverns. And just when I was feeling comfortable with my surroundings, the pitter patter of feet would rip me out of my contented state to remind me that I was never truly alone. I found it relieving when I came across a voice recording of one of the scientists that used to work there. They spared no expense on voice acting and there were many different voice actors in the game that provided depth to the story and had me rooting for my character, hoping that these people had somehow survived. Audio scores 17 out of 20. Vaporum costs £15.99, €24.99 or $24.99 and with around 13 hours of gameplay here, I had no reservations recommending this game but when you factor in replayability, to be fair, it's seriously lacking. Based on my research of the already existing version on Steam, it sounds like the developers continue to add more exo-rigs 
and talent tree options, and the game can be played again with a different rig, but the loot you acquire throughout the game will still be the same the next time you play. If you then factor in the lack of achievements on the Switch version, then it may not be the ideal price point. Value scores 13 out of 20. To conclude, Vaporum isn't the type of game I can see myself playing for hours on end, but it is one that keeps me wanting to come back and play in short bursts. For that reason alone, it has found a perfect home on the Nintendo Switch. You can set this game down, then pick it back up on your train ride to work and hardly miss a beat. The information you uncover leaves a lasting impression on you that makes it one of those games that's hard to forget long after playing. Vaporum receives a switch up score of 79%. Well first of all I just want to say a huge thank you to Shannon for what I'm sure you'll agree was a wonderfully written review. Please do show us some love in the comments section and leave a like if you did enjoy what you've just heard. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you. Please do keep it switched up for all things Switch all the time and until the next one, happy gaming.